In this video, we're going to be using a 2D image to drive 3D displacement inside of Fusion. And we're going to essentially be treating an image as a geometry buffer to create this lightning bolt or plasma looking effect. So let's dig into it. Let's open up a new shell, set my environment variables and start up Fusion. For this exercise, we're going to be starting with a background node. The background node is going to be our container for the geometry and the placement of the effect. So we're going to select the resolution to be something like 64 by 256. And make sure you're working with 16 float or even 32 bit float. Make sure the uh, gradient is set to a top to bottom one. And what we're going to be using is specifying X, Y, and Z coordinates in each one of these to correspond to points in 3D space. So let's, uh, let's start with that. We're going to put down a image plane and put down a node called Custom Vertex 3D. Just to make things a little bit easier for me when we type the expressions, I'm going to rename this to CTV. Let's have a look at this node. The custom vertex node gives us access to a couple of extra features like these points in 3D space. If we go to the config section, I'm just going to disable the ones we're not going to be using. We're now left with two points. If we go to the points section, we can now see that we have point 1 and point 2 and the corresponding X, Y and Z uh, sliders for each one of these points. And what we want to do is copy these values, x, y, and z, into the RGB of this gradient. So I'm going to create an expression here on this gradient on the red channel, on the green, and the blue, for both the top and the bottom one. And I'm going to link it to the x, y, and z for both of these points. So the expression is going to be ctv.point1.x. And we're going to copy and paste this down. So y, z, and point 2x, and point 2y, and point 2z. Now, how do I get to this expression? Well, if you have a look at this slider and you look down in the lower left corner, you can see the syntax for accessing that variable. So now we have these two points. And as we're moving them around, you can see the gradient changing. And as you would imagine, the red channel in this image represents the x-coordinate in both of these points. And because we're working with float, they can get into the negative values as well. The next section involves using this image to displace this image plane between these two points. And I'm going to put down a Displace 3D node and connect the background to it. And by default, it's set to the alpha channel, but we actually want to displace it using the RGB. And right now, we need to be make sure that it's set to relative rather than absolute. The absolute would make sure that it's a very, very thin line between these points, as this image has no width in terms of its um, spatial X uh, dimensions. So we, we just set this to be relative and on the image plane, we just make sure that we scale it in Y and Z. Now we have this X slider that will function as our width slider. Let's have a look at this. We can now move these two um, locators around and have the geometry update in between. So this is the first step. Um, I'm going to increase the resolution on the grid a little bit to something like 64 by 128. So now we have a lot of detail that we can work with for the next step. The next step involves creating some noise to map onto um, this position image. And we're going to be using the fast noise node in Fusion. And uh, let's create the same resolution. So 64 by 256. And uh, what we actually want is um, a different kind of noise in the red green and blue channel to correspond with the X, Y and Z channel in the geometry. And the fast noise node doesn't actually support colored output or individual noise in three channels. So we're going to copy it 
and we're going to create a clone or an instance in this case and we're going to de-instance the seed function and that lets us have identical copies except for the type of noise or rather the uh, the seed of the noise let's copy the uh, different noises into their respective channels so the I want this one to be the red this one to be the uh, the green so we use a channel boolean set to copy do nothing for red blue and the alpha so you can now see that at least red and green have different type of noise let's do the same for the blue channel We can now see that in the red channel, green and the blue are completely different. The noise that we've got is actually between 0 and 1. And we want them actually to go between minus 0.5 and 0.5. So we just put down the brightness contrast afterwards and go minus 0.1, minus 0.5. And you can now see that we have values that are uh, going into the negatives as well as the positives. So with this 3D noise created, or this rather uh, peculiar looking image, uh, we can add it to our gradient. And we now have this 3D noise mapped to um, this gradient that already describes its position in 3D space. It's a little bit too much. So we're gonna take another brightness contrast and use that to modulate the amplitude down a little bit. And I reckon the, uh, the, the noise is probably a little bit too high frequency. So let's go back and change the, uh, the scale. Now is probably a good point to enable the high quality function and turn off the auto proxy mode. If we want to control where this noise gets applied on this curve, we can add yet another um, brightness contrast down here. Let's create, let's rename this to mask. And let's rename this to amplitude. Now the mask one, we're just gonna multiply it or gain it down to zero, but we're gonna connect a rectangle to it. That way, if we have a look at the, our, our image here, we can now specify exactly where we want the noise to appear. So let's invert it create a very very soft gradient around it so that only the center portion of the geometry has more noise on it I'm going to do a couple of more tweaks to the um, to the noise itself let's uh, increase the amplitude and let's enable the seed rate so that's going to animate the noise over time for us. Now, one thing we've got here at the um, the uh, st start and uh, end point of this geometry is that it's it's all wide. So I might want to go back to the image plane and just uh, scale it a little bit. We scale it down to zero. It's all being emitted from a point and then ending up on a different point. Let's um, speed it up a little bit. I think that looks pretty interesting. A couple of notes about the image that we're seeing here. This is effectively an image where each one of these pixels represent a um, single point in 3D space and we're using the displacement to put that particular vertex in that particular 3D space. There's a couple of ways of visualizing these position passes in Fusion. The displace is one of them. The particle system has options for, for uh, creating a point cloud based of these p-world images. Um, and there's a third option in here using the subviews. So the 3D histogram function is actually quite useful. In this case you can see how the uh, cube just outside of the cube has all these points 
and it's a little bit coarse so if you increase the resolution of it and set it to something like solid we can actually see the um, the effect inside of the uh, 3d histogram so it's a pretty cool way of, of uh, representing this sort of image that looks like noise but it's actually quite a um, informative image let's move on to uh, playing with the texture that's going to drive the overall look of this shape so for that I'm going to set the uh, background to be black turn off the lighting and turn off the fast mode and create another fast noise image now this one is going to be the texture so we can be a little bit more generous with our size so let's leave it at um, 256 by 512 connect that to the image plane and um, what I like to do is just enable background render and what fusion does then is just caching this section while we're working with this one so fusion doesn't have to re-render our entire flow just because we're working with this little section here so for this noise image I want some uh, pretty long streaks along uh, flowing downwards so let's do something like 50 let's put a lot of contrast into that let's take the brightness way down let's even do minus 2 maybe even 10 something like that and uh, if you look at the image now because we're doing the contrast we're now actually going down into negative numbers so I need to put down a brightness contrast and make just make sure that I'm clipping the black white and the uh, the alpha as well let's have a look at this okay so that's looking pretty interesting let's um, animate the um, we'll put the seed rate up so that the noise changes pretty much on every other frame or so and um, one thing that would be cool to do is just animate this all the way constantly so I'm going to put down an expression here and just say move it by the variable time which is changing per frame um, so right now it's going to be at 1004 and 1005 but I know that value is going to be way too high so I'm going to multiply it down by something like 0.5 Okay, I'm starting to um, starting to like the um, the overall look of what I'm seeing here. I think maybe the geometry needs some more detail. Uh, maybe even a bit of change of scale and uh, maybe a change of amplitude as well. And uh, if we look at the noise. The, uh, the 3d noise here maybe we should actually move this this direction as well so we're going to put down another expression here where we set it to go to um, use the variable time and multiply by 0.3 let's have a look and see what that does okay that's probably too fast so we're going to do 0.2 okay that's looking pretty interesting let's um Let's have a little. Uh, let's have a little play with a um, transform. Put down two transform nodes on the texture here, and uh, we're going to put one up, and we're going to move the other one down. And uh, in the top one, we're just going to affect the red channel, and you can probably already figure out what I'm trying to do here and in the bottom one we're just going to affect the blue channel so effectively what I'm trying to do is a bit of sort of chromatic uh, spectral type of uh, uh, display some on, uh, on the image just so we can get some interesting colors into it uh, we can then stick a good old color corrector down there maybe color grade some of the shadows put the saturation up maybe we'll increase the highlights maybe something like this maybe we'll even put a blur in there and blur the entire image a couple of pixels and then just mix it back so we get some uh, kind of like ghosting effect 
the cool thing is this is still all interactive with these two points so you can have it you know you can you can link it to um, something that's animated um, if we need the end point to be crazy we can go back to our mask here and just make sure that um, you know only the the top section has this thin thin line and then everything else just funnels out into this big shape So there's a, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Perhaps even making the, uh, the uh, if we put down another brightness contrast here and we connect a mat to it, we can set the, um, you know, we can set the uh, end point to be very, very bright. You know, something like that. Maybe even do 10, do a big soft mat. And, you, and uh, we can just change these around so that top and bottom makes more sense flowing that direction. And um, let's turn off the uh, 3D grid and let's have a look. So that's uh, one way of creating a plasma or a lightning bolt-ish type of effect inside of Fusion. The uh, main takeaway from this video is how to um, exploit or use these uh, vector images as basically geometry buffers inside of Fusion. You can do a whole lot of crazy stuff once you um, start playing with the idea that geometry can also be uh, images. And as a last example of exactly that, let's just take the uh, the uh, uh, 3D vector map here and just blur it. And you'll now see that the geometry will actually uh, become really, really smooth. And instead of these sharp angled lines that we've had, you now get these really nice flowing, uh, more motion graphics -y type of lines. I hope this video was useful for you guys. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.